We are joined on the line now by Professor Stephen Zunis, who is a professor of politics at the University of San Francisco, has done extensive research on the issue of Western Sahara, and has written a book, Western Sahara, War, Nationalism, and Conflict Irresolution. Can you start by talking about Trump's recent statement about Western Sahara and about Morocco's occupation of it? Um, what's the significance of uh, his recognition of of this takeover? The United States is the first Western nation, and depending on how you figure these things, perhaps the first nation in the world period, to recognize Morocco's illegal annexation of Western Sahara, a former Spanish colony that Morocco invaded back in 1975. Uh, Western Sahara is recognized as an independent state uh, by nearly 80 countries and is a full member of the African Union. So by recognizing Morocco's annexation, he is effectively recognizing the takeover of one recognized nation state by another. This is a very dangerous precedent in terms of international law, uh, just about the first time that has happened since the signing of the United Nations Charter in 1945. Wow. So basically, uh, Trump's policy is that any nation can, by military force, take over another territory and then be recognized in doing so. This is essentially it, yes. I mean, he's already become the first, uh, made the United States the first country to formally recognize Israel's annexation of Syria's Golan Heights. But the Golan is just one part of uh, Syria. Right uh, this time, he's advocated the taking over of an entire country. This is uh, particularly dangerous since there has been large-scale resistance by the Western Saharan people, an armed struggle up until 1991, and a nonviolent struggle since then. The, because of the ceasefire in 1991, was signed by the Polisario, the, the National Liberation Struggle of Western Sahara, in return for a free and fair referendum on the fate of the territory. Morocco didn't allow that to happen, and the, and the French and American veto power, the UN Security Council, prevented the UN from enforcing its resolutions calling for the self-determination of what is effectively Africa's last colony. Because of increasing provocations and violations of the ceasefire by Morocco and the failure to go ahead with the referendum, the Polisario relaunched the armed struggle just last month. With Trump recognizing this annexation, the uh, Polisario, in the eyes of the United States now, is a rebel secessionist movement, not the uh, national army of a recognized nation state, and therefore could be used to justify U.S. intervention on behalf of our Moroccan ally. Now, back in the Obama administration era, there was talk of having a national uh, referendum um, in Western Sahara and Morocco for the possible recognition of Western Sahara as an independent nation. Instead, uh, the Western Saharan people faced a widespread repression from the Moroccan authorities. What is the current status and uh, what about that uh, referendum as an option? Morocco has ruled out the referendum, uh, in, presumably because they know they would lose it. The vast majority of uh, the Western Saharan population indeed does want independence. Morocco has pushed this autonomy plan, which Trump has endorsed, that really would not give the Western Saharans much autonomy. It was far short of what the international legal definition for autonomy would be. And uh, there's no, no, I think there'd be a let up in the serious human rights abuses. Now, Freedom House, for example, has ranked Moroccan occupied Western Sahara as among the worst of the worst. And eight, I've been to uh, 85 countries at this point, including Iraq under Saddam and Indonesia under Suharto, and I have never seen a worse police state than the occupied Western Sahara. 
And you have uh, recently written for Foreign Policy magazine, a potential way out of this conflict. Uh, you recommend something like the East Timor model. How could that apply in this case? Well, East Timor is a very similar situation. It was a case of late decolonization, and the powerful neighbor invaded it. And uh, the powerful neighbor's friends in the Security Council prevented the UN from doing anything about it. But eventually, there was a uh, global civil society movement, uh, which effectively shamed Indonesia's supporters, the United States, Britain, Australia, and, and basically made it so it was politically impossible for them to continue supporting Indonesia. Indonesia finally felt the pressure and finally allowed for a referendum, and the vast majority of East Timorese voted for independence. So what this is going to take, basically, is for global civil society to mobilize. The do a BDS campaign, for example, targeting Morocco's occupation of Western Sahara, just like the BDS campaign targeting uh, Israel's uh, occupation of the West Bank. That it is up, it's up for to ordinary people to defend basic principles of international law when the governments of the world will not. And what do you think led to this announcement uh, by Trump that he would recognize Morocco's takeover of Western Sahara in an unprecedented move um, for international policy? It appears it was a quid pro quo for Morocco recognizing Israel. Uh, this is uh, Morocco has had quiet relations with Israel for many years, but they had not recognized uh, Israel, and it adds to the list of the two tiny emirates that ended up uh, recognizing Israel a few months ago. And Morocco, though it's far away from Israel, is a fairly important Arab majority state, and so this is seen as a big victory for Israel, which uh, Trump wanted to take credit for. The problem for the incoming Biden administration is that while Biden could legally uh, uh, overturn uh, Trump's decree of recognizing Morocco's takeover of Western Sahara, Morocco, in return, would uh, likely uh, renounce its uh, recognition of Israel. Therefore, that puts a lot of pressure on Biden by uh, Israel supporters uh, not to uh, rescind the uh, U.S. recognition of the annexation of Western Sahara by Morocco. And at least at some point during the Trump administration, the uh, resistance in Western Sahara believed that he might be an ally in their quest for independence. What happened? Well, uh, John Bolton uh, became the national security advisor, and uh, Bolton is far right-wing and crazy as he may be, because he spent time uh, in Western Sahara as part of a UN mission under former Secretary of State James Baker, he saw what was going on there, and his sympathies are with Western Saharan independence. So uh, there was some hope that he might convince Trump to, therefore, end the longstanding bipartisan support uh, for Morocco and push the kingdom to allow for a referendum. However, of course, as we all know, Bolton is no longer on good terms with uh, Trump, and so he clearly doesn't have any more influence. And instead, it seems that the current foreign policy, at least for the next month or so until uh, the new uh, president takes power in the U.S., is a kind of might makes right. Uh, does it seem like there are going to be other statements like this from Trump forthcoming? Well, he certainly has shown by this example more than any other his disdain for basic principles of international law, uh, like the illegality of a state expanding its territory by force. I mean, that was what World War II was fought about. That's what the Gulf War was fought about. And so it makes the United States even more of an international outlaw. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Zunas, for joining us uh, on KBU and for sharing uh, these thoughts about Western Sahara and the recent statement by Donald Trump. Glad to help. Thank you. This is Jenka Soderberg reporting for KBU Radio.